Hello and welcome to this Prime Loops tutorial where we're going to be looking at the Wavetable Synth Serum. Uh, in this first video we're going to be looking at the basics of getting around the synth. In the second video we're going to go in uh, a little bit more in depth with the Wavetable Synthesis and in the third video we're going to be looking at some other general tips and tricks for processing the sounds that you're making to try and get the coolest result you possibly can. So. First things first, let's just have a look around the interface. So you can see in the center at the top, we've got two main oscillators, oscillator A and oscillator B, which can be turned on and off with these sort of light type buttons here. Uh, there's uh, the option to pick from a large library of wavetables by clicking on where it says default up here. Um, as you can see, there's just quite a few folders, um, and you can also scroll through them by using these arrows right here. Um, there's a visual interface just underneath there um, that's showing you your wavetable, or at least the current frame of the wavetable, and we're going to look a little bit more at what that actually means in the next part of this three-part tutorial. Uh, across the top here, you can see it says octave, semi, fine, and course. Uh, these are all pitch options to allow you to repitch the oscillator. Uh, and then at the bottom we've got uh, an array of options, some that look more familiar and some less familiar perhaps to you. Uh, but again we'll go through exactly what all these do in the wavetable segment. So there's also a sub oscillator up in the top left and a noise oscillator underneath that to allow you to kind of augment your sound if they're required, so you might want to add some extra sub to a bass, or you might want to maybe add a little bit of uh, fizzing noise into a pad, um, something like that. So it basically allows you to add those sounds without having to sacrifice one of the main wavetable oscillators. Next up, on the right hand side, we've got the filter, which again you turn on by clicking this light LED type button. Uh, it has all the standard filter shapes that you might expect under normal. So for example we've got a low cut there, uh, sorry a low pass there, um, we've got a high pass here, um, band, peak, notch and so on. But they also have uh, some very cool uh, multis uh, where they've really got uh, a couple of uh, shapes going on. And the flanges and combs, which do all kinds of mad things, as you can see here. Now, one thing to remember with uh, the filter, or to note at least, uh, because this confused me at first for a little while, is that to uh, route all the oscillators through, you need to make sure they're all turned on here. So we've got oscillator A, oscillator B, uh, noise and sub. So just make sure that everything's going through the filter if you want it to be, but it might be that you want to separate a few things out. Next we've got the modulation options, which are uh, all kind of focused down the bottom of the screen, at least the envelopes, as you can see here, LFOs on the right, and then we've got some mod wheels on the far left uh, that you can map to things as well if you so desire. Um, if you want to kind of map something, say let's say LFO1 or, or any of these in fact, then all you do is you just drag and drop from the title bar onto a parameter like so. You can see that the blue range has come up and then you change that range just by clicking on the blue circle there and dragging up and down to change the range. If you want to get a bit more in depth with the uh, modulation there's actually a tab at the top of the screen called matrix which allows you to go into a little bit more depth uh, adjusting things like the amount uh, which is essentially the same as adjusting it here um, and we've also got we can change the curve that it follows and also whether it's in unilateral or bilateral mode or 
bipolar they call it there um which essentially means does it just move up or down from the starting point or does it move to both sides of the starting point so for example one now it's in the bipolar mode there you can see that it actually goes to the left and to the right of the set wavetable position that I've got in here so but we're going to look at a little that a little bit more in the uh, in the second video and and actually put that into practice making a sound um, and then finally uh, we've got a FX tab with a really good range of effects um, a lot of the ones that you might expect but they're all very high quality and there's a few extra cool bits and pieces in there as well so you can turn the effects on and off just by clicking these buttons next to them and as you can see they all stack up into a chain like so um, now we're going to also look at effects a little bit more uh, a few cool things that you can do with those in the final part of this three-part tutorial um, as there's a few little cool tricks but if you want to reorganize the uh, the effects and the order that they're working in you literally just drag and move them around like so so uh, that sort of wraps up this initial brief roundup um, in the next part we're going to actually go a little bit more in depth into using the wavetable synthesis itself which is kind of the star of the show with this synth um, and then in the final part uh, we'll go through some other general tips and tricks and just useful ways of navigating the way around the synth so make sure you click through to that and keep watching.